Hello everyone and welcome to another cloudy little tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to make these jack-o'-lantern or just plain pumpkin coasters. They are perfect for a spooky season, for a fall. You can put a nice warm cup of tea, coffee, or even a pumpkin spice latte, whatever it is you drink on there. Let's look at the supplies you'll need. You will need worsted weight yarn in pumpkin orange and brown. You could also use a dark green instead of the brown. A five millimeter crochet hook, scissors, snippers, anything to cut your yarn, and a yarn needle. Don't mind me dropping mine. I forgot to show it here, but you will also need black felt and fabric glue if you're making a jack o' lantern. We are going to start off with a magic ring. If you don't know how to make one or want to use the method I'm using here, I have linked a tutorial in the description that explains exactly how to make the magic ring that I used right here. After you make your magic ring, you're going to chain two and do 12 double crochets into your magic ring. So you can see all I'm doing here is just my double crochets into the magic ring. Make sure you get underneath all those loops from the magic ring. Okay, once you get all 12 double crochets, just tighten your magic ring. Make sure it's nice and tight. We don't wanna leave a gap behind. And then just slip stitch to join. For round two, we're going to chain two and then do double crochet increases all the way around. So that's two double crochets in each stitch. Just continue around the entire row of double crochet increases. Once you reach the end, we're going to slip stitch to join. After our slip stitch, it is time to step up to our next round with our two chains. So for this round, we're going to do one double crochet and then a double crochet increase. So every other stitch will be an increase. So that is one double crochet, one double crochet increase. And we're gonna repeat that around the entire row. So just repeat that pattern until you make it to the end. Okay, once we reach the end of our round, we are going to slip stitch to join. For round four, we are going to be starting with a chain up of two, like usual. And then we are going to do two double crochets and a double crochet increase. You can see me going here, there's one double crochet, two double crochet, and then here's our double crochet increase where we put two double crochets in the same stitch. So we're gonna continue that around, two double crochets, then a double crochet increase, repeated all the way around the row until we get to our very last stitch. So for this round, we're not gonna be doing a double crochet in our last stitch. Once we get there, I will show you what to do. So for now, just do your two double crochets and a double crochet increase until you make it to that last stitch. Here we are at our last stitch and I will show you what to do now. So we're gonna chain two, then we're gonna slip stitch into that last stitch that we didn't double crochet into yet. So slip stitch there, 
and then you're going to slip stitch into the slip stitch that we joined our last round with. You can see it right there. And then we're going to tie off our yarn. And what this does is it gives us a little indent at the bottom for that lovely little pumpkin shape instead of just a flat round shape. This right here will be the bottom of the pumpkin. So we flip that around and it's time to start working on our stem. So for the stem, we're going to use our brown or dark green, whichever one you chose. I'm using brown here. Uh, we have the same crochet hook, that five millimeter, and we're going to loosely chain seven. Now you don't need to chain crazy loose, just a little looser, just like pull it up a little bit more instead of like tight around the hook like you normally would. And this is because we're going to be working into the back loop. Uh, if you don't understand what I mean, I have linked a video in the description that explains exactly how to crochet into the back loop and how to chain so that it's a little bit easier to work into. So starting in the second chain from the hook, working in the back loop only, we are going to do four single crochets. You can see I'm working only in the back loop here. So we're going to do four single crochets. That's one. Here's our second one. Our third one. I probably should have sped this up a little bit. Sorry about that. Our fourth one. Okay. After our four single crochet, we're going to do a half double crochet still working into the back loop of our chain only. And then we're going to do a double crochet in our last stitch, still in the back loop. And we are going to tie off, but leave a long enough tail to sew it onto our pumpkin. So just about that much, just enough to be able to sew it on. And there it is. We are going to sew the stem onto the top of our pumpkin. Where, right here where we finished working our last round is the bottom. So we're going to put it directly up from that. Just position it wherever you think it looks best. You can see where I'm putting mine. It's just directly up from that little bottom divot. And just sew it on. I mean, I'll show you how I did it here, but I didn't do anything special. If you want to go between stitches on the orange to make sure that that brown doesn't show in the back, absolutely go for it. I'll be honest for this, I wasn't that concerned about how it looked on the back, on the bottom. Because no one's going to see it. I was making these for myself to use. So I wasn't overly concerned when I sewed it on. It looks really great from the front. But it is up to you how you sew it on. If you want to be extra careful in the back so it's not visible. That's what I would do if I was selling this. But I just made it to keep for myself. So I wasn't too concerned about it. And then we're going to just do a little knot in the back here. I did make sure to make my knot on the brown part. And then you're going to want to tie in the loose end. It's a little bit awkward to tie in the brown on such a small little stem. But you can just run it back and forth to lock it in there. Um, and then you're going to want to tie in the loose ends from the rest of the pumpkin. Snip that. Okay, um, I'm going to tie in the rest of these loose ends off camera because I don't think that's needed, but just go ahead and get your other ones tied in. Okay, now if you just want a plain pumpkin, your coaster is absolutely finished. Here we go. And congratulations. But if you want a jack-o'-lantern, 
you can see here I already cut out the face um, out of the felt cut it out lay it down on your coaster before you glue it so that you can figure out where you want it where it's gonna look best when there isn't the consequence of glue left behind now I didn't cut these out on camera because quite honestly I'm really bad at cutting things out you can see this mouth is totally janky and weird but just do your best it's pretty simple and the best part is jack-o-lanterns are hand carved anyways right so they're always gonna look a little weird a little wacky so it doesn't matter if it's perfect now I'm using hot glue do not do this please use fabric glue Fabric glue will be so much better. If you use hot glue, then like putting a hot drink on the coaster once it's done, it could potentially melt the hot glue. It's not ideal. I forgot to buy fabric glue to make this tutorial. And I always have hot glue around no matter what. I make sure I don't run out of hot glue. So that's what I'm using because I needed to film the tutorial. But please use fabric glue instead. And if you are like me and you don't have fabric glue on hand, but you always have hot glue, um, just be careful using hot drinks on the coaster because there is a potential that it could end up melting your glue, which would not be great. But yeah, just cut it out however you like. I did two fairly even... Uh, larger triangles for the eyes, a smaller triangle for the nose, and just a zigzag kind of mouth. Um, cut it out however you think looks best, however you would make your own jack-o'-lantern if you were carving it yourself. And there he is, he's done. I love him so much. I have always been partial to that classic jack-o'-lantern face. I also have linked below a tutorial to make a 3D plush jack-o'-lantern. If you're interested thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or anything like that leave a comment down below and please subscribe